This is the Against the Current podcast. Against the Current is a faith-based counseling ministry that helps individuals, couples, and families experience emotional, mental, relational, and spiritual transformation through biblically-based principles with one-on-one counseling, workshops, and seminars. If you want to find out more, head on over to atcmcounseling.com. Hi there, Katya here, back with you for another powerful podcast And I am so excited today because I have a special guest. Uh, Mimi Butcher is here with me. And uh, Mimi is a mentor, a spiritual mentor uh, and leader in Growing in God Ministries, right? Yes, it is. And uh, Growing God Ministries does amazing work. They uh, do work in the community. They help moms and babies, uh, young people, homeless, give out food and clothes and Mimi works with young girls and I'm excited to be here with her and we're going to be talking today about boundaries. So I talked about boundaries last two weeks ago and I told you guys that there is so much information that we still need to cover so I um, decided that we do need to do a, quite a few podcasts on this topic. So, um, so I decided to invite Mimi. She came and spoke at one of our workshops, and it was amazing. So I'm um, very excited to be talking with her today. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Katja, for just allowing me this opportunity to share with others about the boundaries. Um, is one of my favorite topics because it's something that we have to deal with in our everyday life uh, with our friends, with our family, and with our interesting people we come across on a daily life. Um, so just to give you an update about who I am is that, um, again, like I just said, my name is Mimi Butcher and I have been with the Growing in God ministry since 2013 and as one of the board of directors and youth uh, leader in Frederick, Maryland. Um, the founder and CEO of Grown in God Ministry is Reverend Beverly um, Jackson, located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. She, and it's a GIG, is a National 501c3 ministry. Um, the purpose of the ministry um, is to in, in, educate, encourage, and to enhance your God-given authority as you learn to grow in God. Um, the vision of Growing in God Ministry is educating, empowering, and enhancing those desiring to learn how to exercise their God-given authority for a life of power and abundance. And basically, GIG's mission is designed to meet, teach, and help you birth out that which is already in you. Um, the ministry will help you to live in a more productive, self-confident life throughout the Word of God. And as Katja mentioned, um, you know, GIG does so much for the community. Um, and so in addition to serving in uh, Grown and God Ministry as one of the branches in Frederick, Maryland, I have a background in business administration and currently working as a health and wellness consultant in a biotech company. Um, and for more information about Grown and God Ministry, you can check out the website of uh, www.growingandgodministry.org or you can find us in Facebook, uh, Growing in God Inc. And so that's what I have for right now. In addition, I was one of the uh, Elevate uh, team leaders at Church of Redeemer for mm-hmm. a number of years. And I really enjoy helping, you know, um, young and, um, you know, young ladies who are learning to grow and be the person they're meant to be and just want to be a positive influence on their lives. Um, so yeah, so back to you, Katja. You basically, you know, we're talking about the boundaries. Mm-hmm. There's so much so, to be talking yes, about. Yes, boundaries. Okay, so last time we talked a very general overview. You know, just kind of tip a little bit of the iceberg, and it was um, we couldn't cover too much because there's so much there. But um, so boundaries. Today we're going to focus on relationships. Mm-hmm. We all have to deal with people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Close relationships and not so close relationships. And um, if we don't have the proper boundaries, and there are many different types of boundaries, uh, emotional boundaries, uh, li- uh, time boundaries, um, truth boundaries, we talked about so many of these last time, um, 
But if we don't have the proper boundaries, it can damage a relationship. And so I wanted to start off with a friends. Okay, so okay. two friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and we encounter this a lot. And um, mm -hmm. I have seen it uh, again and again. So, okay, so let's say two friends, let's say two girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And um, friend A and friend B, they start off and they're so excited about their new friendship mm -hmm. and they have so many things in common and they're getting to know each other. And uh, friend A uh, becomes very attached to friend B and shows a lot more willingness to get together all the time, you know, and friend B from the get go doesn't put limits, you know, like come over every day sure fine let's video each other every day you know let's let's FaceTime uh, let's watch movies together let's do everything together well friend A might start crossing boundaries without realizing and friend B um, after a while since she didn't set the proper boundaries can start to resent friend A now how do you address that after a long period of time. So that can be a challenge in a lot of relationships um, because we all need boundaries. And we also have to remember that we all have different temperaments. Mm -hmm. You know, friend B could be more of a loner. You know, I need my time alone. And friend A could be very much a people person. So how would you address that? You know, those are very good questions. Uh, what can I say about that? Um, well, let's, let's, have, let's define what boundaries are first. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's go define what that is. I mean, boundaries, it defines your life, right? Mm -hmm. And who you are. Uh, but boundaries are really simple. They define who you are. They say what you want. Mm -hmm. And they mark out what you don't want. Um, they state your goals and purpose for life and then they safeguard them. So they say where you end and another person starts. They are like a property line of sorts. So others can do what they want on their property but not on yours. Hmm. So what is that, you know? So if you have the friends who love to be around you, they're very assertive because they're needy in some way and she's like the first real friend that, that you know that she came across and so she's like attaching like glue you know mm -hmm. I cannot get enough of them right? Right, right so friend and then after a while you know the friend B is like you know I enjoy her company but it is overwhelming mm -hmm. just the attention every single day mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so I guess the best thing would be is you know we have to find out where they're coming from for example what are the roots of it I mean, basically, friend A comes from backgrounds where they had to avoid saying no to keep others happy sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and since the roots are similar, A and B, sometimes it's hard to have similar temperaments or sometimes they have extreme differences in mm -hmm. their temperaments, right? Mm -hmm. So the conflict, when you have different people's personalities, we have to find a way to interact in a way that will add value to them and encourage them mm -hmm. and there are times we have to be a little bit bold mm -hmm. and share with them well, you know it's been so nice spending time with you but you know what let's try to meet more people right let's take initiative of learning new people so we can have more fun with a lot more people mm -hmm. because you know we have some quality time together so let's just do that mm -hmm. and I it's a, another way of saying well it's not I want to spend time with you. Mm -hmm. Another way of approaching is like, okay, let's more, meet more people. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the boundaries will not hit so hard, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, we want to find peace in the relationship. And by not saying anything, the frustration inside can grow so deep. And, right. you know, as we have talked about, you know, the, the differences is that when you have such a deep, concerns and you want to share it but you don't want to say the wrong thing mm. and therefore well, after accumulation of doing that it might get to the point like you know what I don't want to deal with you anymore right it can cause resentment yes it can <laughs> lead to resentment and it can potentially destroy the friendship yes so you're saying communication is important you have to communicate you have to get it out and um, or you know also involve other people 
Uh, but definitely communication is important, so maybe manipulation doesn't start to take place, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever there's lack of communication, uh, manipulation starts to set in, you know. Um, and that can really develop some resentment. Yes, resentment does come. Um, because if, if friend A, um, who is very extroverted, right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and friend B is very introverted, um, then you have that adjustment of the temperaments mm -hmm. in many aspects of it. So, you know, how does one do so? Right? Mm -hmm. um, do we just say, well, you know, I, I really enjoy spending time with you, but I realize there's so many things that I want to do, and I want you to come along, but I think in order for us to do that, we need to just spend more quality time with others, and then when we do that, we can bring more um, interests of mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes we might have to be just a be have diplomacy. That's the way I look right. at it. We have diplomacy, to have diplomacy. I like that word. <laughs> yeah, I like to, I like to use diplomacy because there are so many ways of saying things to people mm -hmm. in a very positive manner. Mm -hmm. But if we are too short in our own way of speaking, it might come across of offending another person. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that, you know, because we all care for one another. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want that to happen. So, you know, and I think that what I would do is I say, you know, let's, let's try something new, mm. you know, let's try something new this week instead of having us on, you know, FaceTime because of the coronavirus, you know, let's go out for a walk, you mm -hmm. know, and just, um, you know, do something different than you normally do mm -hmm. because we need the fresh air, we mm -hmm. need to have that balance and, mm -hmm. you know, the healthiness of relationships and, and there's another way of sharing with the person, like, you know what, indirectly, um, let's have some space. Right. But in another part, it's like diplomacy comes in. It's like, you know what, let's do something different. Mm -hmm. Let's meet more people and let's take walks with new friends mm -hmm. so that we can do that. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, otherwise, then we're going to have this ongoing resentment of this person just bombard me with all of her activities and I don't even right. have a love of my own anymore. And also, I think it'd be okay to tell the friend who, how I am. I need my space sometimes. You know, I am more of an introvert and I need my time alone. You know, sometimes I might just want to watch a movie just myself. I don't want to watch it with somebody else. You know, like for me, for example, <laughs> I love sometimes to just sit in my bed with my computer and watch a movie by myself, you know. <laughs> Whereas I have a daughter who loves to do everything with everybody all the time, you know, and that's fine. Um, she likes to watch a movie with somebody else. Um, but it's okay to tell how you are. And say, you know, sometimes I just need time alone by myself and, you know, not feel judged for saying how you feel. I think right? that's, I think that's with excellent. Diplomacy. Oh, of course, with <laughs> diplomacy. I mean, that's the key word here, diplomacy. Right. So, um, and I'm with you on that, 100%. And I guess in my way, if I approach it with somebody, and I'm very extrovert. I don't know if you know that by now. Okay, so I am so <laughs> extrovert, right? But at the same time, I need some time for me right. as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were thinking coronavirus, you know, you're like, hello, you have so much time already. How much time do you need to be by yourself? Well, because you have other family members in yeah. the household. It's not you by right. yourself, right? Right, right? And so I would say to my husband, and I said, sweetie, you know what? I just need some time by myself, mm -hmm. you know? And indirectly, it could mean, well, I need some time with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to meditate on His words. Mm -hmm. And that needs a long time for me, mm -hmm. right? So that's mm -hmm. one. Second thing I would say, you know what? I just need a break from everything. Yes. From business, from relationships, for everything. Right. And I like to watch a movie by myself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if as as intro, extrovert as I am, I right. need some time for myself right. too. And there are That's things. Okay. Yeah, I mean there. I mean there are shows that he enjoyed watching with the baseball game, the football games, you name it. Mm -hmm. He has everything his interest. 
and I go along with it mm -hmm. so that we can have a quality time together. Right. Okay. But then it's time for me. Right. I like the action movies. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and therefore, like, he is not all that into the action movies. So I'm like, okay, that's all good. You know, <laughs> we all have a different interest. Right. So, you know, it's about how we relate with each other. How do we talk right. to each other? And I think where the boundaries are, you know, sometimes we don't um, put boundaries with our words. Okay. Words. Words. That's important. Okay. Because boundaries can come off as, you know, here's a clear example. Okay. So people with poor boundaries struggle with saying no to the control or the pressure or demands mm -hmm. and sometimes the real needs of others. Mm -hmm. Because they only think about themselves and okay. they don't think about the boundaries like what's what's important to you may not be important to me. Mm -hmm. But it is important because if you have a relationship, the boundaries have to be healthy. And in order to have healthiness in a relationship is, okay, so my thought process is like, okay, what can I do today to add value to Katja? Mm -hmm. How can I speak life into Katja today mm -hmm. so that she will feel appreciated? She will feel happier because of time we spend together. Mm -hmm. And the other side of the boundary is negative boundaries, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes people may be very manipulative because they want to do their thing. And let's say, you know, they want to go to a concert and, you know, but the, you know, um, type B may not like going to a concert mm -hmm. because they're very introvert, mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, we have to understand the emotional part about the individuals mm -hmm. but if all we think about the relationships are what all about me it's all about me mm. eventually that will crash and right. burn right right i guess we have to make self checks and just identify am i being selfish um you know and what are which this is great because we can transition into um relationships with you know, romantic relationships. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So before we even dive into that type of relationship, I think it's important for a person to identify who they are, mm -hmm. what their identity is, and know what you believe and what your standards are. Mm -hmm. Because nobody can set your standards for you except for you. That's correct. So we each set up standards for ourselves. I can't set up standards even for my own kids. You know, I can <laughs> teach them, right? Uh -huh. I can teach them the best I can, but everybody sets up their own standards so when you go into a relationship you have to know what you believe what you want what your goals are as a person uh, what your truth boundaries are before you dive into a relationship mm -hmm. right absolutely um, and especially in today's world because there's so many different beliefs out there uh, standards can vary Right? Some yes. people have no standards, it seems, right? Yeah. Um, so, okay. So, you deal with a lot of young girls. What do you tell them? You know, there's, it's all different. You know, I mean, it all depends because I have ministered to ages 12 years old over to 60 year old. So you have that long range about romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. And some... They're so new, mm -hmm. they sometimes have a bad way of thinking what a relationship is. They watch TV. They think that the movies on TV is true, all right? How romantic relationships are. Right. Or they look at social media and they say, oh, look at them. They're so perfect together. But behind the scenes, they're miserable, you know? Right. Upbringing. Their own parents? Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and that's where a lot of it comes in. It's about the upbringing. Right. The, you know... I was not brought up in a healthy relationship in my family. I, um, I was raised in a very, very dysfunctional family. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it took me a lot longer to understand what a healthy relationship is, especially when you have the opposite sex of, mm -hmm. you know, what is proper way of doing things? What is, what is the proper way of talking to them? And, you know, and if I look at my dysfunctional family, they're yelling all the time. They're screaming at each other. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, a part of my mind is like, I know that can't be healthy uh, you know yeah. and then I also met my godparents who live two houses away from me and they're Caucasians mm -hmm. and they have a very high standard of relationships 
mm -hmm. a high respect for each other, appreciation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, throughout the whole time when I'm spending time with them, they have, thank you, George, or thank you, Beatrice, you know, for getting me this. And, and I really picked that up because it was the opposite mm -hmm. of my family. Mm -hmm. So for example, male-female relationships, okay, so let's say, I'm not going to jump into real quick about marriage first, but I just want to give you a compre comprehension of what it means in a relationship. So if a, for example, the um, marriage, okay, you know what, let me go back to, go to, to the single girls first, okay, let's do that, male and female. So let's say many singles who have not developed a good attachment with other people and who have not had their boundaries respected try to learn the rules of the biblical uh, friendship by dating, right? Mm -hmm. And they hope that the safety of these relationships will help them learn to love, be loved, and set limits. But unfortunately, quite often of these individuals come out of a few months of dating, they were more injured than when they went in. Mm, that's true, yes. And they also may feel let down, put down, or used. Now, this is not a dating problem. It's a problem in understanding the purpose of dating, mm. right? So the purpose of dating is to practice and experiment. It says, that's what relation and with whom we are spiritually and emotionally compatible. Um, and it's a training ground for marriage. Right. So it's a preview. So right. basically what you see is what you get unless they were faking it the whole six months, okay? Mm -hmm. Or they faking it the whole year, right? Mm -hmm. So it has a lot of that learning and growing and you know understanding about the other person. And like you said, you addressed something very crucial is about the upbringing. Mm -hmm. Because if an individual does have grown up in a very dysfunctional family, like myself, who have not seen a healthy marriage relationship, they think that, okay, the yelling, screaming is normal in a relationship. Right. So guess what happened? They get in a relationship, and they think that yelling the other person is okay. Right. But what happened if the other person had a healthy relationship, you know, with more affection for one another, with a lot of appreciation for one another, and they can look at this person and like, why is he yelling at me? Mm -hmm. I don't see that at home with my parents. Mm -hmm. My parents love each other. They, they appreciate each other. They hold each other's hand when they're watching TV together. And that's not exactly what I'm thinking about. So that's where the conflict, the boundaries comes in, you know. And that's when you have to be honest with the person, speak up and say, you know, I don't know what type of upbringing you had um, about marriage relationship or even dating relationships, mm -hmm. but... These are the things that I've seen in my, in my life, in my relationships. And so you're basically letting that person know is that I value who you are, right? but the way that you are interacting with me is not appreciated. Right. I like that. And you mentioned something about one of the purposes of dating is getting to know the person, you know, spiritually, emotionally, and also find out where you are, who you are. Mm -hmm. um, and I like that because that should be first, right? Mm -hmm. Emotionally, socially, spiritually. Where does the physical fall into that? <laughs> Ooh, again, to the deeper the conversation here. Because a lot of times what we see in social media and movies, for sure, uh -huh. the physical is first. They and jump then, right in. They yeah. jump right in. And then where does that leave the emotional, the mental, the spiritual? They out the window. <laughs> I'm sorry to it's say. It's a lot harder, I mean, right? Oh, yeah. If you go into the physical first and then try to mesh emotionally or spiritually, that's you know, a lot harder. You know, it's interesting you say that. I, I have had a conversation with uh, the young ladies that I spoke with. And those are the topics that get very hot and interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I would share with them is, you know, what are your beliefs in God's way of being pure? Mm -hmm. um, what are the expectations do you want in a dating relationship? You have to know that what you want first between you and God, right? Mm -hmm. Spiritually. Because before you meet anyone, you have to get the ground rules first down right. on table, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, and I'm going to give in to temptation, Day one, when I see the person, 
just because he wants to? Or do you say, no, I have my beliefs and I'm going to stick to my guns. Mm -hmm. Because God created each and every one of us unique and special. And our body is a temple of God. So guess what? If you jump right in, basically you say, well, you know what? Uh, the body that God given me is not important. Right. It shows a lack of respect for yourself. Correct. Exactly. Absolutely. So what I would share with them is that I... I know for me, when I was dating, I have my rules and regulations about what my think, my, my thoughts are. And so I would share with these young ladies and say, look, you know, I mean, you are basically giving a preview of who that person really is. Mm -hmm. Are they being respectful to your beliefs? Are they respectful to who you are? Or are they all they think is about, my, about themselves? Are they self-centered? Because if they're self-centered and all they care is about themselves, then whatever you say is pretty much out the window. Right. And that's pretty much the beginning. Right. Okay. So, I mean, what I share with the ladies and I said, well, you know, let them know up front. Say, look, you know what? I really am enjoying dating you. And, you know, maybe at that time they may have gone out maybe three, four times at that time. Mm -hmm. Still new, still fresh, you know. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman, or it could be the male or the female. I'm not going to say one gender more than the other because I want to be right. fair here. Oh, no. I want to be fair here. For okay? sure. Because, you know, the female could be jumping the gun too. Oh, yeah. So I want to be yes. fair here. So And, and sometimes the gentleman to say, you know what, I just want to slow this down. And then the right. woman's like, no, I'm going to rock the roll now. You right. know. So it, it has that respect of sharing your thoughts and your beliefs and your standards mm -hmm. day one right because if you don't you have that kind of a boundary it's like are you going straight are you going around the cliff to get to a certain place around yeah. things you know mm -hmm. and so i think it's important just to have them understand is look you know i like you and i think that you know i'm just getting to know you and but i want y'all not front okay so I don't believe in having any intimacy with you. And the reason is because I want to wait for the right person mm -hmm. who truly value who I am. Whom you marry. Whom I marry, exactly. Let me be right. very clear. Thank <laughs> you for that. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, it's like, it, I will not be in a, in a physical intimacy with any guys until I'm going to be married to that person. Mm -hmm. And that will be after I saying I do mm -hmm. in matrimony, okay? Right. And if you can respect that who I am, then I think we can continue our relationship and see where this can go. Right. But if you don't understand that and you don't respect my belief of what I have put in place right now, then I don't want to waste your time or my time. Right. And it shows some selfishness if they're not willing to respect that. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, that means they're a little bit more on the selfish side and you probably don't have any business being with them, you know, the relationship is probably not going to go, it's not going to flourish the way you would want it to flourish mm -hmm. anyway. So, um, I think that is awesome. Uh, very great tips. And, um, uh, I think that we are pretty much out of time now. Mm -hmm. I have so much enjoyed our conversation and I hope this conversation helps, um, all the good listeners out there and if you have any questions again you can feel free to let us know you can go on the website atcmcounseling.com or you can email me um, and also if you have any ideas for future topics that you'd like for us to talk about uh, please let us know as well so with that everybody have a great awesome day Thank you, and you guys have an awesome day, and go out there and be happy and knowing that God has an amazing special plan for each and every one of you. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. You can also follow us on Facebook at Against the Current Ministries and on Instagram at Katya C. Mills.